Hey guys, it's Anime K Swimming Bird, and welcome to a new snapshot update for Minecraft 1.11. This is 16W33A, the third new development version. But if you missed any of the other snapshot videos and want to check those out, I'll put a link at the top of the description. I've actually just passed 200 snapshot videos, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. It feels like just yesterday I was stumbling around in the dark looking for cats out in the jungles of 1.2. And if I didn't know any better from the version numbers, it sounds like I'm working backwards. But anyways, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone out there watching for helping me get here. All right, let's start with a little teaser image from lead developer Jeb. He posted this on Twitter, and he's been testing maps. And he found that they looked pretty cool when you make them in the end, so he's likely going to keep that in as a new feature, probably in a future snapshot here coming up. And down here we've got our village because some changes to villagers here, not just villagers, but also horses. The villagers and tamed horses in the past, they were kind of tough to, uh, to name. You had to use some tricky ways to, uh, to name them instead of jumping on their backs or, uh, or trading with them. But now you can just right click them and the name tag takes priority. So there we go, very easy to, uh, to name these guys. Unfortunately, the saddled pigs, for anyone out there still using them, they do not work with the name tags. You gotta name them before they get their saddle on. And uh, yeah, hopefully they'll add that in the future here. And then, well, watch out, Natoven. In the uh, in the other villager department, is uh, you know as far as updates go, the green villagers. It seems like they don't despawn anymore. That was a bug, and I you know trapped a few in here and flew away and came back, and they are still here. So they must have fixed that. Now, the normal green villagers that spawn in in these villages still don't let you right-click on them to trade, but you can, of course, cure the zombie villagers and trade with them. And of course, they have Nitwit, their default name, but they do have these randomized trades from other professions. Hopefully, they get their own profession here soon. It seems like they're fleshing them out and, and working on them. I know a lot of you guys in the comments said maybe they could be lumberjacks or something unique like that. I think maybe uh, it would be cool if they were like traveling merchants and they had a bunch of different trade items that we couldn't find elsewhere, and that would also explain why they have been gone from the villages. They've been in the game, but they you know, have disappeared from the villages for a while here, and they're finally a part of the, uh, the natural spawning Minecraft ecosystem. All right, now I've got some farmer villages over here because they have some trade differences as well. The ones that trade apples, they used to only trade five at max or sold them, and uh, now they can sell five to seven apples. And you see, you, you know, you can get a few more apples for your emeralds. And uh, the cookie selling farmer villagers, they would only sell six cookies at max. And now they can sell up to 10. We've got an eight one here. But w combining with the, uh, the hunger buff from the other snapshot recently, food is now gonna be easier to come by and, and trade for, but also you won't need it as much. I think they just wanted to uh, de-emphasize the fact that you're constantly eating in this game, unless you need to heal, that is still an important part. So uh, I do have a little banner over here that I made, not just to uh, to mess around with. I kind of varied the design a little bit from way back when banners were added, and I'll put a link if you want to, you know, get that for yourself. But there was a bug fix to shields. Now shields previously would have some issues when you put banners on them. They would lose their enchanting levels and their durability, but now it retains that. And you can get your nice little uh, shield here. Probably looks very weird. Yeah, he loses his eyes in the conversion. But uh, but yeah, now shields will retain all that stuff. So don't worry about enchanting them and stuff like that before you add on your banner. And you can see we have a bunch of, uh, of furnaces over here. Now smelting, you can get rid of a lot of excess items that you have a little easier now because all of these items here can be uh, used as fuel they don't really burn for that long, so wool will only smelt about half of something here, or cook. We have carpet down here. This one only does a, a just, uh, or like just lower than a third. It's like 0.33% of the item. We have ladders as well, and these will do uh, about one and a sixth of the item. Yeah, you're gonna need multiple ones to, uh, to actually get a whole item cooked out of these little things. The button will only do about half of the item here, cooked. And then the bow, these, I, I always get a ton of these in survival because the, the skeletons drop them. But uh, but yeah, the bow will do 1.5, so you actually get a full smelt out of your bows. 
There we go. But if you have one that's about to break, might as well use it for fuel. If you're short on coal or anything like that. The fishing rod also does 1.5, about the same amount of wood as a bow. The, uh, the sign here will do one whole item. So this will cook my fish very easily there. And then the bowl is only half an item here. The wooden door is also a full item. You'd think that the door would do more than the, the bow or the fishing rod, but maybe the string burns really well. I don't know. It's a little strange. There's a lot of wood on there. And last but not least, these chickens. You know, you put a boat down, the chickens just all flock in there. And uh, luckily, we got some to cook in here. So the boat will smelt two items, which is nice. The, the boat has a little bit more wood. That kind of makes sense. It looks like it's got more wood than the door, but you'd think the door would still be better than those other ones. All right. Now, I've got a bed over here because a lot of you guys probably noticed in the past, you can be, you know, within range to click on the bed and uh, and not get in there. We're going to set time to night here. And uh, if you try to click it when you're not close enough to jump in, there's a new message. It says, you may not rest now. The bed is too far away. So it's basically like, hey, get a little closer here. Then you can jump into bed and you're good to go. But yeah, they, they, uh, they fix that so that it doesn't just, you know, not have any message for you to let you know what's going on. Uh, over in the uh, in the mob category, let me grab my egg here. The Elder Guardians, they have a different drop now. It was, uh, it was changed. So previously, they would drop dry sponge, if I can get a fix on this guy, he's freaking out. And uh, now they drop wet sponge, which makes more sense because they're underwater. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, think they would have dry sponge unless it was like somewhere within their weird core. Uh, also, the Elder Guardians and Zombie Villagers now have distinct subtitles to separate them from normal Guardians and Zombies, so you can tell them apart. And uh, you know, even if you're not using the subtitles normally to, uh, to help if you're deaf or hard of hearing, it is kind of a nice way to find stuff a little easier. You might be able to track down the Zombie Villagers a bit easier if you, uh, you have those on, because you can read their noises. There are two new splash screens. They're both Pokemon Go related, little references to that that game. There are uh, There's one that says, should not be played while driving. And the other one is, you're going too fast. There's no way to say, I'm a passenger to stop it from popping up. But, but anyways, those are nice little touches. A couple bug fixes real quick before we finish up here. There was a bug where you can't eat, throw, or shoot while looking at an iron door or iron trap door. They fixed that, and I think I heard that uh, it's going to break some fishing farms that people have, unfortunately, but, you know, it was a bug. Uh, trades not being randomized for farmer villagers, they they did fix that. I don't know what this guy's doing. He is a nitwit. No, he was, like, getting hit in uh, with the stone there with his head. Uh, they attempted to use, uh, or if you were attempting to use currently unusable items, it would bob up and down, but uh, but now it doesn't do that. I kind of liked that because it was kind of a cool little weird food dance that you could do if you weren't really hungry. But uh, but yeah, they, they took that out. No armor stand breaking sounds in creative mode has been fixed. The, uh, the filling and emptying of buckets and bottles for cauldrons weren't playing right. Spawn eggs, if you spawned uh, mobs on the sides of blocks or inside, they would kind of like phase into transparent blocks and stuff like that. And... Uh, a couple other things with mobs that are actually pretty interesting and might hint towards some future stuff in 1.11. So skeletons, strays, and wither skeletons, the uh, the tipped arrow in their offhand was not having them shoot the, uh, the tipped arrows in their bow, which was a nice feature that was added in to make them a little tougher if they, they get their hands on tipped arrows. And I don't think they spawn with those naturally still, so hopefully we see that in the future. If you hang around an area long enough, maybe that's like, in addition to having armor and, and better weapons and stuff, the skeletons might get tipped arrows. That would be cool. And the uh, the wither skeleton and the zombie pigmen, this is a very weird bug, but they were emitting a constant hissing sound despite not being on fire when they were standing on a submerged fence. I don't know how the person found that, but uh, but yeah, they, they figured that out. And last but not least, this is probably the most interesting of the uh, the bug fixes. Husks and zombie villagers were dropping zombie heads when killed by charged creepers, and they took that out. Now, I don't think the husks and zombie villagers drop any uh, any mob head now when they're killed, and that might be a hint that we're going to get new mob heads for those guys. That would be nice if they had their own unique thing. Uh, <laughs> got this. Speaking of, uh, of villagers not being the brightest, we got a librarian trapped in the well. All right. So yeah, hopefully we get more unique mob heads and uh, and other features, of course, are on the way. I've mentioned this before in the other snapshots, but this is just, you know, little bug fixes and things to hold us over. Minecon, September 24th and 25th, we're going to get 
the big, big new features revealed for 1.11. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I appreciate everyone who's, uh, who's watched my videos. And uh, of course, check out some of the other series if you're into other games and stuff. I'm at SwimmingBird941 on Twitter if you want to talk to me there. Please subscribe if you haven't. I'll have more Minecraft updates in the future. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, maybe leave a like if you didn't already. I appreciate all this and you sticking with me. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.